Hello, accounting superstars. This is Professor Don Bush. I've been a professor for about 30 years, a CPA for about that long, and I've got great ways to explain accounting, so you've come to the right place. Hey, I want to introduce my dog, Chewy. He's a really cool dog, and uh, I thought I'd show a, a little picture of him here. So, uh, hope you like it. Hey, well, what we're doing here, we're studying a uh, break-even point, and I've got, uh, oh, probably about five or six videos on this now, and uh, this one's about the seventh, and uh, so I'm just showing you another way to look at it here. It's really easy. Uh, if you want me to explain things slower, watch some of the previous videos, okay? So I'm going to rip through this one. So here's what we got going. We've got a traditional income statement, folks, and this uh, income statement is the kind of income statement you learn in school. It's the kind that you see on financial reports and investing reports. And the problem with it is uh, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange the furniture a little bit. We're going to just move things around, not really change things, but just move them around a bit. So uh, we need to know some information to do that. So I'm going to split the screen. So this is what we need to know. Uh, cost of goods sold up here, 580,000. Uh, we need to know, well, is it fixed or variable? Because that's the key to success here, trying to find the break even point. So uh, here are some things that um, we find out. Um, direct labor uh, is 280,000. Now direct labor, those are the people that actually work on the sailboats. They build the sailboats. And the more sailboats we build, the more of these direct labor people we need. So um, that 280,000, that is considered variable. So I'm gonna put a little note here, variable. Direct materials, those are things like teak, uh, the uh, fiberglass, uh, the masts, the sails, the, the lines. The more sailboats we build, the more of this stuff we need. So this is also variable, right? So direct labor, direct materials, that's usually always variable. And then we have variable factory overhead. So it's given in the name there. So this 50,000 of overhead, it varies with the amount of sailboats that are built. Fixed factory overhead, $100,000, that is staying the same. No matter if we make five sailboats, eight sailboats, uh, three sailboats, this fixed factory overhead stays pretty much the same. Selling expenses are fixed. Administrative expenses are fixed. Now, the reason why we need to know this is because we need to um, kind of divvy up the, the expenses into two categories, variable and fixed. Variable costs, well, that direct labor up here, 280000 Here's where it comes from, right up here. There we are. So let's just drop it into our chart. Direct materials, right up here on this uh, little chart. Let's drop it into place. Variable overhead, the 50 grand, right there. Let's drop that into place. Now, if we add up these variable costs, we get a grand total of 480,000, ladies and gentlemen. So, coming down here to fixed costs, we've got fixed factory overhead right here. And let's drop it into the chart. Selling expenses, 80,000. Drop it into the chart. Administrative expenses, Drop that into the chart. And let's add it up. Fixed expenses are a grand total of 255,000. Now we'll use this information when we rearrange the furniture. So here we go. So just one more time, we've got this traditional income statement up here, which is really great. It's according to GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, but we need to rearrange it. So we need to just move the numbers around a bit. So. Here's how it starts. Sales is 800000 So I'm just grabbing that off of the income statement. Drop it into place. The variable costs, we've got that down here. Here we go. Variable costs, 480000 Let's drop that into place. Now to get the contribution margin, it's really easy. 800000 minus 480, we get the contribution margin of 320. And folks, uh, while I'm thinking of it, just memorize this contribution margin income statement here. Just memorize it, it's easy. This is all there is to it. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin minus the fixed costs equals net income. Memorize it, you'll, you'll be happy you did. So here's the fixed costs right here, 255. 
drop that into place and net income. All we do is take the contribution margin minus the fixed cost. We get net income, folks. Now, if we look at that traditional income statement, the net income ought to be identical. And there it is. Look at that. 65 grand up there. So like I said, we're not changing things. We're just moving things around a bit, just making it a lot more useful. So I'm going to scroll down here and get that uh, contribution margin income statement where we can see it right up here. Here it is. This is what we just did. Now, uh, an important step in here is we need to find the percentages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy these numbers up above and I'm going to paste them right down below. I'm not changing anything. I'm not doing any extra work. And you might wonder, why in the world are you doing this? Um, well, when you're doing your homework, you don't need to do this. But I did it separately so that way it's easier to understand. Now, wasn't it easy to understand that contribution margin income statement? I mean, what we did up here, that was easy, right? That's why I did it. So I'm just going to copy what's up here and paste it down here. Nothing is getting changed. So let's figure out the percentages. The percentage for sales is easy, super easy. It's always 100%, always. Don't write anything else down, 100%, no exceptions. The variable costs, all you do is take 480,000 divided by 800,000 and there you go, 60%. Now to find the contribution margin percentage, it's easy. All you gotta do is go 100% minus 60% and you get 40%. Another way to do it, is 320,000 divided by 800,000 and you should get the same percentage. So let's figure out the break even point and I will do that right when I get this. There we go. Okay. Here's the break even point. So let's find the break even point uh, in sales dollars. Super easy. Now the break even point, it's where these two lines cross. It's where the company is not making a loss and it's not making a profit, but it's just breaking even. That's it's really an interesting number. And one thing that that I always like to know is how far above or how far below are companies uh, from this uh, break even point. So the formula. The formula is right down here, fixed cost divided by contribution margin percentage. So all we're going to do is take the fixed cost divided by this percentage. And this is why I told you this percentage is important. We need to know that 40%. So fixed cost divided by contribution margin and we have it. See how easy it is? Some people can uh, do this in their heads. It's pretty amazing. I can't, but some people can. Divided by 40%, so 255,000 divided by 40%, and we get a break-even point of 637,500. So in other words, this break-even point right here, $637,500. If they're selling more, they're in the profit. If they're selling less, they're in the loss. So what's always a good idea is just to double check your work. It's really easy. So let's go down to our break-even calculation here. There we go. So to, to double check your work, all you do is you plug in your uh, break-even sales, break-even sales, and that percentage is always going to be 100%. Now the variable cost, we don't quite know what that is, but we can figure it out in a heartbeat here. It's really easy. Here we go. The uh, variable cost is our 60%. So all you do is 60% times 637,500 and you get a variable cost of 382,500. And you might be wondering, where in the world did you get that 60%? I got it from right up here above. It's something that we did a couple minutes ago. Now the uh, contribution margin percentage, you could look right there and say, oh, it's 40% or you could subtract. It's really easy, 40%. And uh, all you do is you go 637,500, which are the sales times 40%, and that will give you the contribution margin. There we are. And uh, fixed costs, let's grab the fixed costs right off the chart here, 255, 255. Okay, so contribution margin minus fixed costs equals net income. Now, net income zero. Now, why is it zero? It's because we're double checking the break even point. If you recall from this picture, break even point, that's where you're not making a profit and you're not making a loss. In other words, net income is zero. All right, well, let's figure out the break even point in units. Easy to do here. Now, um, eight sailboats were sold, uh, were produced and sold. 
Uh, so the sales is 800,000, you know, 100,000 each times eight. Okay, each sailboat sold for 100 grand. These are not cheap sailboats. They're, they're really nice sailboats. They're probably 27, 28, 30 foot long. Variable cost per unit, $60,000, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on a per unit basis. In other words, this contribution margin income statement is so, so valuable. It is. All right, so here's a contribution margin statement on a per unit basis. So the sales price for each boat is $100,000. Where'd we get it? We got it from this chart right up above. The variable costs are 60,000, which means the uh, contribution margin would be 40,000. You know, 100,000 minus 60 is 40. Now for percentages, the percentages are really important. Always write down sales of, do you have it? 100%. And to figure out the um, variable cost, there's a couple ways we could do it. We could just do a little division here, 60 grand divided by 100 grand will give you 60%. Or another way to do it is just look at what we did before, 60%. There we go. And then uh, to get the uh, contribution margin percentage, all we have to do is subtract or we could divide, you know, 40,000 divided by 100,000, either way, same thing. Or what we could do is look at the chart up above there. And so there's three different ways to do this. And fixed costs, fixed costs are right here, right there, folks. There's the fixed cost, 255. Now, here's something that you gotta be careful about. Textbooks try to trick you. They try to fool you. And you might get this on a test or something too. And what's going on here is you always write down fixed costs at grand total amount. Never, ever, ever write it down on a per unit basis. Because if you do, you'll get the problem wrong. Guaranteed, 100% of the time, you'll be wrong. So don't do that. Always write down fixed costs in grand total amount. And if you, in your problems, they give you the um, fixed costs on a per unit basis, don't be fooled. Don't use that. Uh, figure out what the grand total fixed costs are going to be. 255000 Okay, so I don't have anything here for net income. The reason why I don't is because sales and, and variable costs and contribution margin are on a per unit basis. And the fixed costs are on a grand total basis. So we've got like apples and oranges and they're not mixing at all. You don't want to mix that up. So net income, it's really irrelevant here uh, on this. So um, let's see here, coming down, there we go. So here's what we just completed. So how do we figure out the break-even point in units? Really easy, guys, super easy. Here's all you do. Here's the formula right here. Fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. So we're gonna take this 255,000, which are the fixed costs, drop them right in there. There we go. And we're going to divide by the contribution margin per unit, which is $40,000. That's per unit, taking it right from there. So let's put down 40 grand. And what we're going to do is divide. All right, we get 6.38. Now it didn't, uh, the number did not end up being a nice round number, like six or seven or five or something like that, but it ended up being 6.38. And what this means is it takes 6.38 boats to break even, that is, we have to build and sell 6.38 boats to, uh, you know, break even. Uh, that is, not have a loss or not make a profit either. Now, um, you you can't sell 0.38 boats. That that just doesn't work. It probably wouldn't float, right? You know, a third of a boat. You have to sell a whole boat. So uh, when it comes to break even point uh, point. Uh, a safe thing to do is to round up the number and say, well, we need to produce and sell seven boats. And that, that would get the job done. Um, or you could say it's between six and seven boats, something like that. The margin of safety. Well, here's the formula for the margin of safety. It's easy. Current sales minus break-even sales. All right, so let's, let's solve that. Current sales minus break-even so sales. So what's the current sales? Well, we could go up to one of these previous income statements. Why not go clear to the top here? So our sales, our current sales are $800,000. So you just drop that into place. And then you take the break even point in sales dollars. And we have, we figured that out. Here it is right here. Break even point in sales dollars, 637,500. 
So the margin of safety is, we just subtract 800 grand minus 637,500, we get 162,500. And what does that mean? Well, what it means is um, sales could drop by 162,500 for us to break even, all right? So that, that's kind of a, like a cushion, you might say. So what's the uh, margin of safety um, percentage here, or percent drop to break even? It's margin of safety divided by current sales. So all we're going to do is just take this margin of safety, 162,500, divide it by the current sales, which are 800,000, and do a little division. There you go, you get 20%. So in other words, uh, at this point in time, sales could drop by 20% before we start losing money. In other words, sales could drop from where we are now, 800 grand, uh, by 20% until we reach that break-even point. Now, if we drop more than 20%, we're going to start losing money. So it's it gives management an idea of where how much cushion we have, the, how much risk there is in this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you got a lot out of it. And if you did, hit that like button and the subscribe button. Also, check out accountingsuperstars.com. I've got all these videos listed by topic, so they're easier to find. So until next time, over and out.